Right, hi. We're going to try to look at this question from the second book. It's the mixed exercise of um, chapter two, looking at piecewise and other types of functions. So, firstly, let's go ahead and read through the question. Function f has the domain from minus five to plus seven. So it goes along the x-axis, it goes from minus five to seven. And we can work out the rest of it from there. Um, we're asked initially for part A to find the range of f. So f of x firstly has to be a real number. Secondly, it's between minus 3 and um, 18. And looking at those, you've got black filled in dots, so it can exist at both of those levels. So that's why I've done less than and equals to rather than strictly less than so part b find f of f of minus three now remember what we're trying to do here is rewrite this as f of f of minus three and that's equal to f of minus two because if you look here we can see that if f is uh, if x is minus three then f of x is uh, minus 2. That's nice and easy. So now we need to solve uh, what is f of minus 2. We need to be able to work out the equation of this line here. That's essentially what this is asking us to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to grab a different color pen. We're going to work out the equation there. So we know that um, y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1 and the gradient here is rise over run it rises is 20 so it's 20 over and the run is from minus 3 to 7 rise of 10 so the gradient is 2 and um, I'm going to use the coordinates here because that's definitely a point on the line so that gets me x uh, that's going to be plus 3 because what um that's three that's x minus minus three and this would be y plus two so uh that gives me uh y plus two equals two x plus six or in other words y equals two x plus four now if x is minus two that will give me y equals zero so Using that, now that tells me that I've solved the equation on this side here. I know that this is uh, 0. f of minus 2 is 0. That looks reasonable given the way that the question uh, is drawn. Oops. And undo. <laughs> it's not working. Never mind. Pause a second. There you go. Sorted it. Slight panic. Okay. Let's take this on to part C. Sketch the graph of y equals um, mod of f of x, marking the points at which the graph meets or cuts the axes. So we need to find this point here uh, in order to know where it crosses the axis. Now at that one, we're going to use, again, going to use the y equals mx y minus y1. Excuse me y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. I'm going to take that point again. So um, here I've got y minus 6 is equal to m. Now the rise this time, it goes down 8 and it goes across 2, giving me a gradient of minus 4 and that's x minus minus 5. Why have I used the 6? That's weird. I'm using this number instead of the other one. Okay, so that's going to be plus 5. Um, so simplifying gets me y minus 6 equals minus 4x minus, um, minus 4 times 5 is minus 20. y equals minus 4x minus 14. So I need to find when y equals 0. If y equals 0, x equals um, 14 minus 14 
over 4, which is minus 7 over 2. Again, that makes sense, minus 3.5, because that's close to where you'd expect it to be, because we'd expect it to be close to 3, it's just there. Okay, so now we know both of the points, I can just uh, discard this piece of working, and we've asked to sketch the graph. So, um, we're asked to sketch the graph of y equals f mod of f of x, marking all the points in which the graph meets or cuts an axis. So the graph comes down like this. This is uh, the point that we discovered earlier. It goes like this, and then up again. Important, we should bear in mind where it actually stops and finishes. So let's uh, mark on these key points. This is still minus five, six. This point and this point we also know. This is minus three, two. This is seven, eighteen. We found this point is minus two, zero. And this is minus seven over two, zero. Finally, we need to find that point. So we have the equation that we got in the previous part of a question, in the previous part of the question, this equation here. So that must mean that the crossing point there is zero, four. And we've succeeded in completing part C. Finally, we have another section which asks us to solve an, an equation where we have to find g, f of g of x equals two. Um, so, f of g of x is equal to 2. So, remember that uh, we are going to find g of a number that comes out and gives us a result 2. Um, no, not quite. We're looking for the value that we put into um, the function f such that the value that comes out is 2. And that's, if we remember, the value that it would give us two. There are two options. If I draw the line across here, we're looking for this point or this point. On this point here, that's when x equals minus 1. And for this point here, um, I'll just quickly work that out. I need to solve the equation that we found for the line here, which is minus 4x minus 14 equals 2. So that gives me minus 4x equals minus 16. So x equals 4. So my values are minus 1. That value I got by solving uh, 2x plus 4 equals 2. And that gives me x equals minus 1. So I've got to find the solutions, the g of x... The numbers that come out of g of x need to be um, minus 1 and 4. So I'm trying to solve x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals, equals 4. Um, wait, spotted an error. Um, sorry, that should be minus 4 because that should be plus 16. So... Now, that allows me to get x squared minus 7x plus 14 equals 0. Um, this has no solutions. I know that because the discriminant, d, will equal uh, b squared minus 4ac. So minus 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 14, which gives me... 49 minus 4 14s are 4 14s, are same as 7 8s, 56. That's minus 7. D is the discriminant's negative, so there can be no solutions. So let me clear that section there. Okay, so that means we must be able to work on the other part. So that's where um, it equals minus 1. So Let's just go ahead and do that. What we're going to find here is a number that, that pumps out of G. So
so that we get minus 1. Right, okay. So here I've got the function, which is x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals minus 1. So x squared minus 7x plus 11 equals 0. Now that's going to solve using the um, quadratic formula. That will give me x equals um, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. Now simplifying that I get 7 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Those are my solutions because if I take 7 plus or minus the square root of 5 and put it into the function g, put it into the function g which is this one, or rather this one, the number that comes out is minus 1. And if I put minus 1 into f, if I put minus 1 into f, then I get the value 2. That's what I was looking for. Okay, thanks. I hope that, hope, I hope that helps.